What is going on YouTube? This is Simon T. Simon here coming to you guys with a Blackwing deck profile for the April 1st, 2015 ban list. So I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. And of course, guys, it's released a premium go too. I finally uh, picked these uh, these new supports up and uh, decided to just build the deck for you guys. So I just hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. And of course, guys, uh, I've been making a lot of changes into the deck since the new uh, new support. I've been taking a lot of cards out and uh, lots of cards in. And guys, without further ado, let's just start uh, with this deck profile. All right, so let's get off uh, with the monsters, guys. And of course, guys, um, Black Wings is one of my favorite decks, and this is a deck profile that you guys all, um, have all been waiting for. Um, you know, I picked it up, uh, this deck for you guys, so I just hope you guys enjoy it. Give this video a thumbs up, that would be absolutely amazing. And of course, guys, Black Wings do what they do best, they swarm. So you know what, uh, having a new addition to the deck, like Chris, is absolutely amazing. So guys, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get started with the deck profile. Right, to start off, we play, of course, Triple Black Wing, uh, Chris, with the, Chris the Crack of Dawn. Chris is actually uh, absolutely amazing, so if you guys don't know what this card does, his effect reads that if you control a Black Wing monster other than a Black Wing, Chris the Crack, the crack of Dawn, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Black Wing, Chris of the cr Crack of Dawn once per turn this way. Once per turn, this card cannot be destroyed by, by spell and trap card effects. So that's what's really, really good about him, and he has been released in the Premium Gold 2. So guys, if you guys haven't got him yet, please go pick it up. He's absolutely amazing. So of course, guys, he has the same effect as Bora, but Bora is better in a sense that he's able to special summon... Um, um, multiple times per turn. Uh, unlike Chris, you're able to just special summon him uh, himself uh, from the hand this way only once per turn. And also, uh, he has a really great effect where he's immune to destruction, like bombless trap hole, um, mirror force, torrential tribute, and stuff like that. So you know, uh, it makes your black whirlwind pl uh, plays go safer. So you know, you guys don't have to worry about uh, you know bombless when you summon the Chris uh, while you have a uh, the black whirlwind and stuff like that. So triple Chris is absolutely amazing. Uh, so this is the only new support card that I play uh, in the, um in the main deck, and I'll explain to you guys the reason why I do not play Pinaka because I play something better um in the main deck other than Pinaka. And you guys will all know who he is. Okay, so Triple Chris, uh, very self-explanatory. Uh, to accompany Triple Chris, you play Triple Shura. Uh, Shura is absolutely amazing. He's uh, your old, you're, you're one of you're one of the old uh, old schoolest uh, Blackwing monsters. He's really really good. Um, what uh, what she does is that when she uh, when she destroys a monster by battle, special summon uh, a 1500 or less attack Blackwing monster from your deck. So uh, that's what's uh, really good about her. So you can special summon Gale from the deck, uh, special summoning uh, Steam from the deck. Anything from the deck actually that's 1500 or lower, and then you can go into uh, easy uh, synchro plays with uh, Shiro and stuff like that. So I like to play uh, Tribush, uh, Shiro the Blue Flame, and she's really good when she sits uh, sits with the Kalut uh, in your hand. So that's what's really, really good about Shiro. Uh, that's it. Tri triple Shiro, Song is Paranatory. Next, you play uh, Triple Boro the Spear. Boro is absolutely amazing as well. Uh, you know, uh, Recently, I've been playing uh, two Boros. That's only that's the reason why I, I only had two super uh, two ultras. Uh, yeah, guys. So uh, I had two ultra Boros before. So I was like, you know what? I might as well just play Boros two base because sometimes I feel like uh, it's not good at three. But guys, I I actually made a mistake. You know, having three Boros is absolutely amazing. You must play three Boros. Uh, you know, there's ex no excuses for you not to play three. Uh, you know, he has, he serves as the same purpose as a six samurai Kazan. You know, like you wouldn't want to play two Kizans in your six samurai deck, you know, this card is so good, he helps put a lot of pressure on board, and he, uh, he can actually swarm himself, that's what black wings are known for, and especially Bora, he, he swarms, he's very, very good, uh, so triple, uh, triple Bora, and I'm sorry guys for the mixed rarity, you know, I have one rare and like two ultras, I don't know, it looks pr uh, pretty ugly, but you know, that's all I have, so uh, guys, yeah, triple Bora, so uh, nine, nine black wings so far, uh, next you play uh, triple Gale, Gale is absolutely amazing, you guys all know what Gale does, he cuts monster in half, and he helps you go into, uh, Level, uh, quick level 7 synchro monsters, which is very, very good. So, 3 Gales. Uh, next, you play Triple Kalut, the Moon Shadow. Absolutely amazing. I love playing Triple Kalut. So, it's fine. try. You guys don't know what Kalut does. Uh, double Blizzard. Blizzard is really good. Uh, it helps you go into a lo uh, lots of combo plays with Zephyros. Bouncing back Blizzard, uh, bouncing back Borat to your hand and stuff like that is absolutely amazing. So, uh, Double Blizzard. Um, last one, at least one Zephyros. And uh, so you guys don't know what Zephyros does. Absolutely amazing. He helps you, uh, he helps Blood. Uh, bounce floodgate cards back to your hand, so that's what's really, really, really good about Zephyros, and he helps you make into uh, make great combo plays uh, with himself. So that's absolutely amazing. So one Zephyros, and last but not least, the card that I chose to play over uh, Pinaka is of course Steam. My reasoning for playing Steam over Pinaka is one, it's better. Uh, my reasoning uh, for Steam is that you know his effect is absolutely amazing. So if this phaser card leaves the field. Um, you get a free token, so you get a free token on the field. You're able to tribute, tribute that token, bring him back out, making your uh, and then making uh, your single plays with the monsters that you have on board. Uh, you know, with him and uh, with Shira on board, if you control with Shira on board, you know, and Shira destroys a monster, you're able to bring Steam, uh, Steam in defense mode, make Armor Master or like um, Hog Joe, Hog Joe, uh, 
Secret Summon the Hawk Joe or Armor Master, tribute a token, bring him out, make Leo. And Leo is, is a very big uh, problematic card for uh, uh, your opponent sometimes. So that's why I feel like Steam is better. And Steam Effects reads is that, uh, what's it called? If this card is summoned this way, uses a synchro, uh, synchro material monsters, all other synchro material monsters must be Blackwing monsters. So you can special summon uh, Blackwing, um, um, what's, it, what's it called? You can special summon Blackwing XYZs and any other, uh, I mean Blackwing synchro monsters. Yeah, you can special summon any Blackwing synchro monsters or any level 7 synchro monsters. Um, that's what's really, really good about Steam. And like, you know, he's able to help you go into Leo. And the difference with Pinaka is that, you know, his first line of effect, you know, just bothers me. Um, cannot be used as a synchro material except for the synchro summon of a Blackwing synchro monster. So, you know, that card already hints their cards. Uh, you know, you can't just normal summon him while you have an armor master and make a Leo. You can't do that. You know, you have to have, uh, you have to make a level 10 Blackwing monster. So that's a, that's a thing about uh, Pinaka. And there's not, there's not even a level 10 Blackwing monster. And Pinaka is just very, very slow. Uh, during your end phase, he gets to search. Uh, while you, you ha in your deck, you already to do a lot of searching with triple black Rowan. So I feel like Pinaka isn't necessary. And if your opponent, uh, what's it called? Abyss Dweller is your uh, Pinaka uh, during the end phase. He won't get his effect. So he serves the same purpose as Dark Soul. He's really, really slow. So that's why I don't like uh, Pinaka. And his his first his first line just bothers me. Like, you know, uh, cannot be used as a synchro, synchro material except for Blackwing monsters. So that's the bad thing about him. While Steam, you know, your whole your entire deck is Blackwing. So you can uh, make uh, him and Armor Master into Leo. Like, like you know, my point is that you can make other synchro monsters that are non-Blackwing names from your synchro, uh, from your extra deck other than Blackwing monsters. That's why I don't like playing the Pinaka. But if you guys w uh, want to play Pinaka, you guys can go ahead. You guys can substitute the Pinaka for the Steam. But uh, just in my personal opinion, I like Steam better because because he's more versatile uh, in many ways. And, you know, you already have so much searching to do. Uh, Pinaka isn't really necessary. Yeah, guys, enough when we talk about Steam and Pinaka. That's just my opinion. And the reason why I do not play Soroko the Don, where is Soroko, guys? Um, hold up, let me get you guys Soroko. You guys don't know what Soroko does. Here. The reason why I do not play Soroko the Don is because I feel like Chris does a better job. And sometimes, um, although so he helps you make into uh, BL's plays and level 8 uh, single plays, I feel like you know, you know I need more space uh, for uh, level 7 uh, single monsters. So that's why I cut the Soroko is because I feel like Chris just does a better job and he searches out your entire deck anyways. And back then, you know, you rely on Soroko um, to search out your entire deck. But now you have Chris, so Chris does a better job. And of course, Soroko, um, he's really slow if you are if you already have like a board presence on board. Uh, so this card is, is pretty bad. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, if you don't draw him like, you know... Um, First, uh, um, what's it called? First turn while you're going second, uh, he he becomes really really bad. Uh, so that's, that's the thing about Soroko. You know, he's he's very iffy. He he can be really good at times, and he can also be uh, very very bad. So that is it for my monsters. So no Soroko and no Pinaka. But guys, uh, as as form progresses, I'll be making definitely changes into the deck, and I, I might even consider these two again. And guys, I've been talking so much about the monsters. Now off to our spell cards real quick. Let me just fast things up. Let's rev it up. Let's rev it up. All right, guys. Uh, off to uh, our spells. Show Black Rowan. So explanatory. Black Rowan just searches out your entire deck. You guys all know what Black Rowan does, and it comes in Ultra now, so it looks very, very sexy. Uh, so triple Black Rowan. Next you play triple Paduali consistency. These cards all give you the whole deck uh, consistency, so that's what's really, really good about uh, Paduali and uh, Black Rowan. And I feel like Paduali is needed. Um, in um in this deck is because you know it helps you dig three cards deeper into the deck and you're able to get a lot of searches uh in the deck with black Rowan and of course pot of duality especially when you're going first you don't want to really special summon you want to really have control of the board so you want to summon Shira or like chris set four back row three back row and stuff like that and just control the game from, uh, from that point on and this card helps you dig deeper into uh, acres attack which is very very important in this deck and of course another uh card that uh adds card to your hand is of course allure of darkness absolutely amazing i love allure, um allure of darkness Next, you play uh, Triple triple Mystical Space Typhoon. Uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm kind of iffy on cutting this card out uh, or not, but I feel like, you know, sometimes MST is very, very good for OTK uh, purpose of the deck. You're easily able to OTK your opponent with this deck now since uh, you, have, you have Natung. Natung is absolutely broken. I'll, I'll show you guys a quick combo. Yeah, you guys can play with Natung later on as I progress through the deck profile. But Mystical Space Typhoon, uh, sometimes I, I even want to cut this card... Um, into the side deck is because I feel like sometimes Acres Attack uh, can be already be served as a Mystical Space Typhoon. But other than that, you know, uh, so far I'm I'm maining the MSCs so I can get, just get rid of those back rows. And this card is very bad against a Necros matchup is because they play no back row at all uh, when they're, when they're, um, when uh, when you're playing them game one. So that's what's really bad about them. But you know, overall against Rogue decks, this card is absolutely amazing. Uh, so triple Mystical Space Typhoon. And last but not least, one Book of Moon to round off our spell lineup is because uh, for the soft lock for the Dijin lock. And, uh, you know, Book of Moon is a trap card built in itself. So that's what's really, really good about Book of Moon. 
So that's it for our spells. Now off to our trap real quick is of course I play double acres, triple acres attacked. I was gonna say double acres. You know, if 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 I if I told you guys that I only play two acres, you guys would think I'm insane. Acres attack is absolutely amazing, is because it can interrupt a lot of of your opponent's play. I love acres attack well for the fact that it's chain it's a chainable card and you know your opponent can really go minus with uh with acres attack. So the proper way that you guys want to uh, utilize acres attack is um is 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 during this way. You guys just don't want to uh, summon a monster, a blackwing monster, and waste an acres attack. Uh, while they have like four back row on the field, that's not a proper way to use Acres Attack. So in my opinion, the proper way to use like, Acres Attack is of course chaining onto something. So let's say you normal summon uh, Shura, Shura and you already have Acres Attack set, and they activate Bomb this Trap Hole in response to your summoning of the Shura. You can act then activate Acres Attack, uh, tribute the Shura, and of course destroy two other cards on board, which is absolutely amazing. So that's the good thing about Acres Attack, and it's, 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 same reason. So let's say um, you're going second, and uh, let's say uh, yeah you're going second, and you open up. Um, Shira and you have acres attack. So what you want to do at this point is that you want to set your back rows and you set your acres attack and next turn you wait if you're scared of your opponent's back row. So next turn when you when you have your combo pieces ready, you normal summon the Shura and if they have no response to it, uh, then that's fine and then you enter battle phase, attack their monster, whatever, and uh, if they have a response to it like Deep Prison or Mirror Force, then you can chain acres attack. Uh, tripping the Shura, popping your, their two other back row or their monster or another back row that they have. Now they're already losing three cards at that point on. So that's the proper way to utilize Acres Attack. Uh, so yeah, Triple Acres, amazing. And it, it interrupts a lot of combo plays. Especially against uh, Gla Glad Beast. If you're playing against Glad Beast, you know, Acres Attack, pop the two monsters up, oh, no guys are, and stuff like that. So it's amazing. Especially with uh, Bestiari at three, summon Bestiari. Their target, they're more, they're more than likely going to target the set. And if they target Acres, you can, then you can chain Acres onto a monster. And uh, just interrupt their best yard plays and stuff like that. So it's absolutely amazing. So uh, triple acres. Next, I play double mind crush. Uh, I feel like you know, mini mind crush in uh, today's meta is absolutely important. I love uh, having mind crush um, in the main. Uh, it's so good. You know, the whole entire format searches. You know, especially ne uh, necros, your senjus, six samurais, uh, the mirror match. Every single thing searches uh, in this entire format. So mind crushes. Uh, not only does mind crush give you the ability to look at your opponent's hand, but it also interrupts their their combo plays as well. That's why I love. Mating the double mind crush, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, after double mind crush, I play uh, double phoenix chain. Uh, int interrupts a, a lot of uh, combos and plays as well. So and it stops attacks, which uh, gives this deck a lot of time to stall. Uh, so yeah, uh, one phoenix chain. Next, I play one mirror force and one black sonic. Um, you guys can play the ratio of two and two, uh, or two mirror force, no black sonic, or two black sonic, no mirror force. It's up to you guys' personal preference, but I love to play the uh, the one of each. It says black sonic is really good because it's a massive dimensional prison. That's a good thing about uh, black sonic. It's, it's it's very very good. But the downside of a black sonic is that if you don't control a black wing monster on board, this card becomes useless. So that's why uh that's what I, that's what I, I don't like about black sonic sometimes. So I feel like this card is very, very bad when you don't control a monster. So that's why I only limit him to one. But uh, aside from that, Mirror Force is good at all at, at all time. Is because you know when your opponent has a massive board and attacks, you can just Mirror Force them and stuff like that. And to be honest, I might even take out Black Sonic for the second Mirror Force. Uh, who knows? But so far, one Black Sonic. Last but not least, one uh, Compose and one Solemn Warning. As you guys can see, I do not play Bombless Trap Hole because I, I felt like Mind Crush is better than Bombless Trap Hole. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. I do side. I believe Bombless Trap Hole. Uh, so yeah, that is it for our trap lineup. You know, you wanna like this deck. You play so much monsters, and uh, you play triple whirlwind. So you're you're basically playing 30, 22 monsters already. So uh, that's the thing about this deck. So you wanna try to uh, to open up and your traps as much as possible. Like you'd rather sit on like a lot of back rows and uh, have one black wing monster rather than just like. Like you know, a full a full swarm of hands. You know what I mean? You, like although like black wings can easily OTK, I feel like you know having a really aggressive mind with black wings is very dangerous. Is because against necros, they can easily clear your board within that one turn. So uh, that's why you have to very, play very cautious uh, with this deck. And sometimes um, I hate having so much uh, black wing monsters in my hand. Like some reason, like I don't like you know ha having three in my hand is already the max. I, I want I always want to have a couple of back rows um, in. Um, with with the monsters that I have in my hand, and of course Nathung clears a lot of hand uh, hand clogs. That's what's what's really really good about him. Now off to our side deck real quick. Side deck is very personal preference, but it's what I have. I play the one Thunder King Ryo. Thunder King Ryo is absolutely amazing. It's because of against the Necros matchup and against any deck that searches. And I feel like you know you have to use Thunder King wisely. Like you know you can always play any anti meta card in any deck. 
only if you know how to utilize the card. So, you know, you don't want to summon Thunder King while you have a Black Robin on board and stuff like that. You know, you want to summon Thunder King first, uh, keep beating, beating your opponent down until he leaves the field, then you can activate Black Robin and stuff like that and go off with your great combos that you have uh, with your, your hand and Black Robin. So, one Thunder King Ryo, absolutely amazing. Uh, stuns your opponent. Next, you play Double Maxi uh, against the Necros matchup. Very, very good as well. Against the Burning Abyss as well. Next, I play Shadow Praising Mirror. Shadow Praising Mirror is absolutely amazing. Um, you know, it will hurt your opponent. Uh, more than it will hurt this deck, but you have to know how, how to use this card, you know. You want to have like a full board of a field first, then you flip this card, and then you just wait for this card to get destroyed so Blizzard can get its effect and stuff like that. But Clued in your hand still works, so that's a good thing about uh, Shadow and Praising Mirror. Uh, so yeah, Double Mirror. Uh, double Fairy Wind, absolutely amazing. Uh, one Skill Drain, because Black Winds can play Skill Drains, and you can easily turn Skill Drain off with Zephyros, so that's what's really, really good about uh, Zephyros. You know, you bounce back to Skill Drain, then you go off, then you flip Skill Drain to stun your opponent, so that's what's really, really good. Usually, I side double Skill Drain in Black Winds, but, you know, since it's at one, you have to play the, the one Skill Drain. Next, I play the one Vanity's Emptiness um, in the side deck, one Bombless. I usually side these in Game 2 and 3, I, and I take out MSTs. I'm kidding. I, n I never take out MSTs uh, in Game 2 and 3. It, it depends. I may just take off one uh one but other than that like who knows it it just depends on all like the matchups that you're playing against double iron wall absolutely amazing against the spirit beat match spirit beast matchup necros matchup as well it's really really good you're immune to dimensional prison that's just really good to imperial iron wall and against a spirit uh, spiritual ritual beast deck you know you flip this against them they're probably going to swoop is because they can't contact fusion their contact fusion relies on all banishing and stuff like that so imperial iron wall is absolutely amazing just stops on the whole deck Next, I play the one side deck Regeki. Uh, you know, uh, since I don't mean Regeki, I felt like, you know, it's better to side off the Regeki. Uh, last but not least, I played a double twister um, in the side deck. So, yeah, got my first uh, twisters. Amazing. So, yeah, guys, so that's it for my side deck. And side deck is always per personal preference, but that's what I have so far. Now, off to my extra deck real quick. Let's go off with the level sixes. Is I play one Goyle, one Vulcan. I feel like, you know, um, I don't have space for any level 5 um, single monsters, so I only play level 6s and 7s. Uh, so, one Goya, one Vulcan. Uh, two the Thung, the new amazing card that came out um, that came out in, in the premium goal. Let me explain to you guys why the Thung is so good. The Thung is better than the Armwing is because, one, when you summon this card, he gets a huge, he, your opponent loses 800 life points, and you get to have an additional normal summon to your uh, mon monsters in your hand. So, he clear it. He clears up Clog's hand. That's what's really, uh, really, really good about Nathung. So he's absolutely amazing. And he's a 2400 beat stick. And you can do a lot of combo plays with him. So guys, as a form of progressors, I'll definitely be making like uh, a combo video on what you guys can do in Black Wings. So just stay tuned for that. So double Nathung, absolutely amazing. One Armor Master and one Hawk Joe. These are the level 7s of Black Wings that I play. Hawk Joe is very good because he can revive... Uh, um, Armor Master, he can revive the Thung, he can revive a, a lot of stuff in your grave. So he can revive all these guys, so that's what's really, really good, really, really good about um, the Thung. One Black Rose Dragon, uh, one Leo uh, for the Steam play. Leo is absolutely amazing. And of course, one Starter Spark Dragon. The thing that I'm missing is probably uh, the Black the black Moon Rose uh, uh, Dragon, which is uh, absolutely amazing. But currently, I, I do not have that card, so I'm only playing the one Black Rose uh, for now. So I feel like, you know, I need, I need, to, I need to at least play another... Uh, level 7 synchro monster uh so yeah and i like to play the one starter shark um i currently do not have bios if you guys have a bios play a bios over the starter spark dragon is because i feel like obviously bios is better in this deck and you can easily make bios by uh normal summoning blizzard uh and you have the thong on board any level 6 synchro monster you can synchro summon into that and and go off with your uh great combo plays with uh bios and stuff like that so yeah guys i feel like you know what i at least need one more level 7 um synchro monster yeah Probably gonna put it in another Iron Master or maybe another uh, Obsidian Hawk Joe and stuff like that. So who knows, uh, guys? Uh, let me know down in the comment section below on uh, what I should make changes uh, into the extra deck. That will help me a lot, guys. Thank you guys so much. So one Bios. This is Starter Spark, but this is really a Bios, guys. Bios. Off to our um, extra deck. I play one Castell. I want to play double Castell is because the reason why it's a Winged Beast, so he makes Acres Attack live. So that's what's really really good about Castell. So one Castell, one Honor Arc. Yeah. To be honest, I might even. Take out the honor arc for the Castell. It's too good. Castell is just very, very good. Uh, one honor arc, one inside on night, one dweller, one ice beat zero fine. This card is the walking skill drain. You know, um, for you those of you who don't play him, you must play ice beat zero fine. And of course, he's a uh, Acres attack target as well. So that's what, what's really, really good about ice beast uh, zero fine. Last but not least, one master key beetle. You guys don't know what key beetle does. So explanatory. The key key beetle lock and stuff like that is very, very good. So, right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile on my Black Wings. Let me know what you guys think. And this is the new format, Black Wings, guys. This is the, the, 
the cards that I have uh, in the main deck so far. Guys, don't forget to subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, guys. And, of course, Team Sam 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 Saniel. Peace. And, of course, guys, as you guys all know it, Black Wings, what do what they do best is is they swarm. Thank you guys so much for watching. And Team Sam 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 Saniel. Peace. Don't forget to subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos.